What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Moving on to the next question, same exact scenario. I feel like I've read this question already like a hundred times. So you are trying to estimate the mean average grade for a university course. You take a sample of students right here and their grades are given. Find a 90% confidence interval. So first thing you want to check, are you given the population standard deviation or not? And notice in this case, we are not given the population standard deviation, so it is unknown. And when the population standard deviation is unknown, we know we have to use the t-distribution. And so what's the format of the confidence interval going to be? Well, it's going to be x bar plus or minus the t value subscript alpha over 2. And then we're going to have the sample uh, standard deviation over the square root of n, the sample size. So what we got to do now is find a bunch of these parameters. So let's start off with the easiest one. I feel like it's this x bar over here. So x bar is the sample mean. Basically, you sum all of these up. You would end up getting 304. And then divided by the sample size, which is 4 in this case. So 304 divided by 4, that would give us 76. So that is the sample mean. So this here is going to be 76. Plus or minus, what's the alpha in uh, this case? Well, if we're looking for a 90% confidence interval, the alpha is going to be 1 minus 0.9, which is 0 0.10. And so 0 0.10 divided by 2, right? We're dividing by 2 over here. It's going to be the t value subscript 0 0.05. And I'll show you how to get that from the t value in a sec. Actually, the t table, if you want to download it for reference, it's in the description box. And then here's what's a little bit annoying about this question, finding this sample standard deviation. It's going to be a bit of a calculation using this data. So usually when you're going to be finding this, you're going to be using the calculator anyways. So the process is going to be pretty easy. But I do want to go over the calculation just so you know what's going on and maybe in case your teacher actually wants you to show your work sometimes, whether with assignments or on a midterm or a test. So we're given these observations over here. We also know that x bar is uh, 76. So that's actually the first step to finding the sample standard deviation. You got to find the sample mean. And so what you do then is you take all of these observations. So I'm going to put them in brackets. And then you subtract the sample mean that you found. So that's going to be 76, this is going to be minus 76, minus 76, minus 76. And then you square all of these numbers over here. And so when you do that, 72 minus 76, that's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. All these numbers will always be positive because if you get a negative here and you square it, it's going to be positive. Then you're going to have 64 minus 76, which is negative 12. Squared gives us 144. 81 minus 76, that would give us 5. 5 squared is 25. And then 87 minus 76, that would give us, what, 11? And then 11 squared is 121. And then what you do is you take these numbers. These are called the squared deviations, right? The deviations from the mean. Square them. You have to sum these up. So you'd end up getting 306. And so once you have that number, that's the sum of the square deviations, you can find the sample variance. So the sample variance is going to equal that number that we got, the uh, sum of the square deviations, over n minus 1. We got to subtract 1 in the denominator if we're looking for the sample variance. And so the n value in this case is the number of units or the number of observations in the sample. It's 4 in this case. So we're going to have 306 over 4 minus 1, which is like 306 over 3, which gives us 102. So that is the sample variance right there. 
And so to get the sample standard deviation, we got to take the square root of the sample variance. Yeah, and when you do that in your calculator, you'd end up getting 10.099505. So I didn't round too much. But nevertheless, that's the sample standard deviation. And that's probably the hardest part of this whole uh, problem is getting that number manually. Again, with the calculator, it's easy. In the calculator, you're actually not even going to have to get that. You're just going to have to input this list. But uh, anyway, wasn't too bad. It gets a lot worse if, this, if the list or the number of observations in the sample is greater, right? Imagine doing all these calculations for a bigger list. That's why I kept it to four, just so I could show you the process pretty quickly. Um, so now, sample standard deviation, we input over here. So that's 10.099505. And we're going to square root it, or we're going to divide it by the square root of n. And the n, in this case, is 4, right? The sample size is 4. And now, all that's remaining to do is to find this t.005 value. Now, remember, when we're looking at the t table, it depends on the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom, if you remember, it's always n minus 1. So the n value in this case is 4. We're using a sample size of 4. Subtract 1, so we get 3. So we would look in the row on the t-table where the degrees of freedom is 3. And then we look for t.0. Um, t0.05, which is right there. So that's the value we're going to be using, 2.353. Right, so that's going to be right there, 2.353. And now we can just calculate the confidence interval. When you do that in the calculator, you'd end up getting 11.8821 for the margin of error. And so the confidence interval rounded to two decimal places, going to be 64.12 to 87.88. So that's the answer to this question. That is the 90% confidence interval for the estimate with 90% confidence that um, the mean or average grade for all of the students taking the university course is going to be between those values. And if you're to do this on your calculator to find this confidence interval, go to the main menu, you go to stat, then you're going to input the list. The list is going to be this over here. So you're going to input four items into, let's say, list one. And then you're going to go to F4, which is INTR. It's basically short form for interval. F2, we're using the T distribution because the population standard deviation is unknown. And then uh, this is one sample. And then you're going to get to this input screen here. So you're going to put list, right, instead of variable. Make sure that this says list. Confidence level, 0.9. And then you're going to have this list input, and you could refer to list one if that's where you inputted these amounts. And so when you execute that, you should get this confidence interval. All right, so a lot easier using the uh, calculator versus doing all of the other work, finding the standard deviation, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes I even ask myself why I don't just show these videos using the calculator, but I do think that knowing what's going on in the background does help with retaining info. You understand the theory a little bit more, and so then you're more prepared for upcoming tests.